Hello everybody and welcome to our next lecture on 5G and today our topic is regarding network flexibility in 5G and it is one of our very important feature in 5G and this is another feature that basically differentiates it from any other generation of cellular networks that have uh, we have seen before. So today when we discuss uh, network, uh, network flexibility uh, in 5G, uh, we will uh, look, in, uh, look into it with two uh, respects. Number one is uh, the network level uh, flexibility and the second level is your physical layer flexibility. And both of these uh, features of network flexibility are linked together with each other. And one thing more, uh, if you hear any uh, noise, noise today from, uh, uh, from kids, please uh, I do apologize as we are making this video at uh, my home and both of my kids uh, are around. So let's uh, begin. So the first uh, concept in uh, 5G regarding uh, network flexibility is uh, network slicing. Uh, so we can write it here. Network slicing. And the concept of network slicing basically uh, comes uh, into being from uh, the earlier concepts which we have seen in terms of Q, uh, quality of service differentiation. We have seen concept of diff serve. We have seen concept of QCI. And we have seen different concepts where we have actually tried to implement some kind of quality of service. But network slicing is actually uh, a far bigger step and far different uh, than your normal uh, quality of service. Network slicing actually means that you create the logical parts of your network to serve different industries or serve different sections of your customer base. And here uh, is where 5G is differentiating from the rest and that is why 5G is called a technological revolution. For 5G, we have certain vertical industries for example, you have your machine-to-machine -machine communication, your auto, um, automatic cars, then your connected industries, uh, your automated industries, your automated plants, all of these uh, industries, and then your enterprise network currently being served with private LT, etc. All of these vertical industries will require different set of uh, QS uh, services and that quality of service does not only depend on the type of uh, or uh, of data rate. So it will depend on the number of devices, for example, for automatic uh, automated cars, connected cars, the number of sensors and the number of devices will be huge. Similarly, for a connected society, for IoT, the number of devices will be huge. On the other hand, if we are considering an enterprise network, the devices may, might be limited, but the throughput requirement would be huge. So these are kind of things when there is power requirement and etc. etc. So what network slicing does is that it basically creates a logical network within a network. So what we in 3GPP, what we uh, hear or the concept is that is called NSI. That is your network slicing instance. So what happens is, for example, you have your core network, core one, core two, core three, then you have your RAN, RAN one, RAN two, and RAN three. So what we see here is that we have logical portions of core one, core two, core three, which is your uh, next generation core of 5G. And then you have your logical portions of RAN 1, RAN 2, RAN 3. So what happens is that a network slice instance basically takes maybe a part of this and a part of this or a part of this and a part of this and it makes a logical network which is isolated from the rest of the network. So all of these resources are isolated from the rest of the network and that rest of the network is being used by other services. For example, your normal cellular services 
or your normal industry services, enterprise services, etc., etc. And each of these elements, logical elements, which actually uh, are consisting of resources, uh, physical resources, uh, core one, RAN one, RAN two, which can be part of multiple inner bays, one inner bay, etc., etc. These are called network slice slicing subnet instances. So when you are talking about network slicing, number one thing is your network slicing instance. That is your one separate logical network to serve a particular customer base, and then. You have your network slicing subnet instance that is part of that network slicing instance and these subnets can be your core network, can be your transport network and can be your RAN network. So this was the concept surrounding your network slicing. So in, in a nutshell what, can, what happens is that this is your network slice for for example M to M. This is your network slice for your uh, EMBV, this is your multimedia services, this is your network slice for your cellular services and this is your network slice for your enterprise customers. So what now happens is that you can basically slice your network and ensure uh, the different requirements of your different customers and you can observe the KPIs you can create these instances, remove these instances, all on a logical level. So the amount of flexibility that you can create to serve different kind of customers from the given pool of resources is immense in 5G and these network slicing play a very important role when you are implementing the uh, enhanced multimedia uh, broadband services your uh, massive machine-to-machine -machine communication and your ultra-low latency requirements in terms of uh, Internet of Things. So this is one thing. Another thing that is very important in the network slicing and uh, basically moving these functions to a far higher level is NFV. That is your network function virtualization. NFV. And it is one of the most, you can say, exponentially growing field right now to generate expertise. And you find very few people, uh, especially in a telco world, which are expertise, have expertise in NFV. What NFV means is basically that the physical entity, the physical functions of core, for example, your next generation core, or some physical uh, functionalities of your RAM are basically performed in the cloud. So basically your core can be anywhere uh, in your cloud network and you don't need to place it in a particular place or in a particular base station site. So what can happen is you can deploy your network anywhere by just your antennas and rest of uh, processing unit and all of the other functions can be carried out in the cloud by using your NFV, that is your network uh, function virtualization. Together, these two concepts, network slicing and NFV, have completely revolutionized the way we envision cellular networks. And these two things basically provide those different use cases uh, in cohesion with the next uh, flexibility that we will see, and that is the flexibility on the physical layer of 5G. So let's begin with the flexibility on the physical layer. So what is diff what is the main difference between uh, the, the flexibility that we have in 5G and that we didn't have in LTE? I have a very good lecture uh, on 5G uh, physical layer already, which I have provided the link below in the description. But let's see uh, in this lecture as well what are the differences in the physical layer and how this flexibility is provided. Number one is subcarrier spacing. In LTE, we only had one subcarrier spacing that is 15 kilohertz. In 5G, we have subcarrier spacing of 15 kilohertz. 30 kilohertz, 60 kilohertz, 
120 kilohertz and 240 kilohertz. And in order to see it in form of a formula, what 3GPP has done is that is delta F 2 into mu. And this mu factor is basically your flexibility kind of variable. So if mu has values from 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. So if mu is 0, that is your 2 raised to power 0, that is 1, your delta F is 15 kilohertz. So mu 0 is your LTE system with a subcarrier spacing of 15 kilohertz. If mu goes from 1, 2, 3, 4, you have your different subcarrier spacing. Now, what is the logic behind having these different subcarrier spacing? Number one, as you in increase the frequency, the Doppler performance of your waves, of your RF waves, differentiate hugely. Secondly, the amount of bandwidth that you will provide in 5G is way more than what we were providing in LTE. We can go up till uh, 400 megahertz of a carrier uh, in 5G as compared to 100 megahertz uh, with carrier aggregation that we used to achieve in LTE. So one thing is Doppler shift, your coherence time bandwidth. So as you move further away into the millimeter wave that is in 25 gigahertz to 52 gigahertz, you will need a larger subcarrier sub spacing and that is provided by your uh, physical layer. And if you compare now, if you connect this flexibility with this flexibility, so if a particular network slice requires subcarrier spacing of 15 kilohertz, then you can make a logical slice using physical resources of 15 kilohertz subcarrier spacing and including in that your network slice. And then if you have E and BB services which require a lot of throughput, then you can increase your subcarrier spacing, go to your millimeter wave and have your throughput performance. So this flexibility is linked with this flexibility. But if we move on from subcarrier spacing, we can move on to your slot. In any network, in LTE specifically, you have your big frame, main frame, that is 10 millisecond. Then we have your subframes of 1 millisecond, and then you have your slots of 0.5 milliseconds. In 5G, we have uh, multiple uh, combinations of the slots, of the time duration of that slot. We have consistent number, same number of OLTM symbols that come in a slot. So each slot we have 14 OFTF symbols. That is a that is a constant. No matter what is the configuration, in one slot we have 14 OFTM symbols. Now what happens is that for mu 0 2 into mu and that is your 1 into 1 millisecond. That's your number of slots. So if you are mu 0, 2 raised to power 0, and you have your one slot. So in one subframe, you have one slot. One subframe is 1 millisecond, and if you have one slot, so it means that your slot is 1 millisecond, and in that 1 millisecond, you have 14 OFTM symbols. Now, if you revisit LTE, LTE had two slots of 0.5 milliseconds and each slot we had seven OFTM symbols. So here we also have a period of 1 milliseconds with 14 OFTM symbols that exactly matches your LTE. Now if we increase the number of slots, if we go to mu is equal to uh, basically the 1, that is 2. So if we have two slots, then we have 0.5 milliseconds of each one slot and 14 OFDM symbols in each slot. So we will have 28 OFDM symbols in one millisecond. What that means, that we have the time duration of that OFDM symbol has reduced. 
and this corresponds basically to the latency the requirements that you send your data quickly and get the feedback quickly in applications like connected cars in applications where your data has to be processed on the edge and it has to be very quick and this flexibility also goes directly to a particular slice if you want more details i have given the link in the description section about uh, physical layer but this is the crux of it this is how a network flexibility works in 5g and this is how it is going to revolutionize the the type of function a cellular network uh, plays in our lives in 5g many vertical industries will converge in using uh, the cellular communication and if anyone asks asks you after today what is network flexibility in 5g i hope you can answer them in a very effective way so if you like the video do subscribe to our channel do check out rest of the videos and thank you so much for your time